Hey, what is going on guys? RVZ Stealth here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my opinion on the best mid laners for Season 5, Patch 5.5, so let's get right into the video. First up on my list, I have Katarina, so Katarina, she is a very snowball -y champion. The reason why she's not higher on my list is basically because she does have some weaker lane matchups and CC champions um, counter her pretty hard unless you really know how to play Katarina well. Some pros to her though are she is a great team fighter because she's got insane burst damage and if she can find that time in the fight to go in and get a good channeled ultimate off then she's going to do a load of damage. She's also a very strong roamer because she um, puts out a lot of damage and she can also use her E to um, jump onto the enemy. She's also got a very nice passive and once you get that one kill or assist in a teamfight as Katarina, you're just going to be able to clean up the low health targets and she's also pretty easy to learn in my opinion. Some cons to her, though, like I said, she does have some weaker lane matchups and CC champions do counter her quite hard. Next up on my list, I have LeBlanc, so I wouldn't recommend playing LeBlanc unless you know how to play her, obviously, because in my opinion, she is harder to play than most mid lane champions, because she's got so many combos that you need to learn on her, and if you don't know all of her combos, then you're missing out on a lot of potential damage you can get off with her, um, but pros to LeBlanc are she does have crazy burst damage. Um, once you get to mid game as LeBlanc and you get your death cap, she just does an insane amount of burst. She also has pretty decent CC, um, more than Katarina, um, because of her E. And she's got outrageous mobility, like her W, and once she has her ultimate, she can cover so much distance with that. And it just enables her to either chase down low health targets or it allows her to escape out of situations that most champions wouldn't be able to get out of. She's also got great juking potential because of her passive and her W. And she snowballs really hard and is a fairly strong roamer as well because of her mobility and because of her chain on her E. Some console Blanc are she is harder to play and she does have a little bit of a weaker late game because come late game the enemies are most likely going to be picking up Banshee's Veil and it's going to be harder for you to assassinate your targets because of that. Next up I have Annie so pros to Annie are she's got insane AoE damage. Once you get into team fighting and you're playing as Annie, if you can land your um, Tibbers on multiple targets in a team fight, it just brings for so much burst damage and so much lockdown. Her passive is also very strong, which allows her to get that nice stun Tibbers off in team fights. And she's also pretty easy to play in my opinion and has great pick potential with her flash stun Tibbers combo. Some cons to Annie are she is a weaker roamer because she doesn't have any sort of gap closer and she also doesn't have any escape so you have to be careful about your positioning as Annie um, in teamfights because if you go a little bit too far out then the enemies could just jump on you and assassinate you very quickly. Next up on my list I have Xerath so recently I've been playing against Xerath quite a bit and the champions I've been playing into Xerath are LeBlanc and Katarina, and he just absolutely wrecks them. I was playing as LeBlanc, and he just, unless you are really, unless you're really good at juking his um, skill shots, he's just going to poke you down in the early game, and it just enables him to have a really easy laning phase because of his insane range on pretty much all of his abilities. He's got really long range. Um, he's also got pretty strong CC with his W and his E, and he's got really strong burst come mid game. If you can land your stun on an enemy, follow that up with your W and your Q, you're going to chunk them down really low and maybe even pick up the kill. And he's also one of the best champions in the game for either stalling out games or for sieging down towers. Some cons to Zareth though are he doesn't have any mobility, so like Annie, you have to be careful about your positioning during team fights. And he is also very skill shot reliant, so he is harder to play because of that. But if you can land your skill shots on Zareth, then he is a very rewarding champion. So last but not least on my list, I have Ari. Pros to Ari are she's got crazy mobility because of her Q and her ultimate. And in my opinion, um, that's one of the key um, aspects to a champion's kit. 
to enable you to carry solo queue in my opinion, if you have mobility in a champion, or if you don't have mobility, as long as you have long range, then it just enables you to um, get out of so many situations that other champions wouldn't be able to get out of. For example, if you're playing like Katarina, as opposed to playing Ari, Katarina's gonna die um, more often than an Ari will because Ari's got her ultimate, she's got her Q which she can use to escape out of so many situations. Um, she's also got very nice sustain in lane because of her passive. She's got great pick potential as well with her charm and she's got very few counters in lane. Even if she's going up against someone like a Xerath, she can just sit back and farm with her Q. And she also does have very strong wave clear as well with her Q and her W. A con to Ari is that she is skill shot reliant as well. First up on the honorable mentions, I have Swain. So in my opinion, Swain is a really strong pick against assassins like Katarina, Akali, Talon, and Zed. So if you're looking to counter those champions, I would definitely recommend picking up Swain because as long as Swain can land his W on them, he's going to be able to follow that up with his E and his Q. And then if the enemy assassin tries to jump on him, once he has his Zhonyas, he can just go into Zhonyas, he will have his ultimate running, so it's going to be really hard for the enemies to take him down, and he just becomes a monster late game because if the enemies aren't building Morellanomicon, which um, most assassins won't, like Zed and Talon aren't going to build Morellanomicon because they're not AP, and Katarina and Akali usually don't build that item, so it makes them a really good pick come late game against those champions. Next up on my list, I have Vel'Koz, so in my opinion, Vel'Koz is a little bit of a weaker version of Xerath, however, he does have very strong wave clear like Xerath, and he's got pretty strong CC as well. The one thing that he does have over Xerath is a really strong um, AoE ability, which is his ultimate, and if you can get your ultimate off on multiple targets in a teamfight as Vel'Koz, then you're just going to be able to chunk the enemies down and the chances of you winning that teamfight are going to be very high. So if you're not feeling like playing Xerath or you just want to play some Vel'Koz, I would definitely recommend picking him up. Next up on my list, I have Zed. So in my opinion, I wouldn't play Zed unless you know how to play him correctly or you're a Zed main because he is harder to play, in my opinion. Um, other people think he's quite easy, but I just think he is harder to pull off because once the enemies um, get items like Quicksilver Sash and Zhonya's, it's going to be harder for you to choose which target to use your ultimate on. And if they do have that Zhonya's, then your ultimate's damage is going to be completely negated. So, in my opinion, um, he is harder to play, but if you do know how to play him correctly and you can work around those items like Quicksilver Sash and Zhonya's, he's got very strong burst damage and he snowballs really hard. He's also a very strong roamer and split pusher as well. So I would recommend picking up Zed, but only if you know how to play him. Next up, I have Talon. So I like Talon better than Zed. That's just my personal preference, but I like him better because his damage isn't easily negated by items like Quicksilver Sash and Zhonya's. Um, because of Talon's ultimate um, giving him stealth, it allows him to engage really sneakily and the opponents aren't going to expect it most of the time and you're just going to be able to burst the opponent down, whoever you're jumping on. So he does snowball really hard and once you do get your items on Talon, you're going to be able to burst them down in less than a second. And he does have a little bit of a weaker laning phase, so if you're not confident on Talon but you want to play him, I just recommend playing it safe in the early game and then once you do get your items, look to assassinate the AD carry on the enemy team. So next up I have Cassiopeia. In my opinion, Cassiopeia is harder to play than most mid lane champions because she does rely on landing her Q and her W to deal maximum damage with her E. However, if you can land your Q and your W consistently, she's a very strong pick because she's going to be able to get out a ton of DPS burst damage with her E and she, come late game as Cassiopeia, you get up to over a thousand AP because of her passive and that's just really insane. You're going to be able to burst down targets really quickly and her ultimate is also very strong for team fighting. If you can land a multi-man ultimate in a team fight as Cassiopeia, then you're pretty much guaranteed to win that fight come late game. However, she doesn't have any mobility and because her Q and her W are harder to land and she relies on those to deal maximum damage, she is a little bit of a harder pick. 
So last but not least, on the honorable mentions, I have Morgana. A lot of people haven't been picking up Morgana, I've noticed lately, in the mid lane at least, and I think she's a pretty good pick mid lane because she... We're seeing a lot of AP mid laners being played in the mid lane lately, so she's a really good pick against them because of her black shield. And if you do build Morgana full AP, she does an insane amount of damage as well, so... If you're looking to counter any of the um, AP mid laners, then Morgana isn't a bad choice. So that is all for the video guys, if you enjoyed then be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you all have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.